Hello there amazing viewers and subscribers and welcome to a brand new Doctor Who kind of series video that's going to be started off today. So this video was requested to me by a fellow YouTube subscriber on Instagram. He's asked me if I can do a series of ranking every single Doctor Who story in each season. So going from season 1 to season 2 to season 3 all the way up to season 26 and of course including New Who. So I thought... After my big massive success of ranking every single season of Doctor Who, I thought, yeah, you know what? Ranking the stories in each season, yeah, why not? Yeah. So the best way to start this series is actually on season one. Now, season one ran from 1963 to 1964. Basically, from the 23rd of November 1963 to the 12th of September 1964. Containing over eight stories, starring William Hartnell as the first Doctor, um, William Russell as Ian Chesterton. Jack Jacqueline Hill as Barbara and of course Caroline Ann Ford as Susan. This is the very first season of Doctor Who and to me ranking all the stories yeah there are some stories that I think are really really bad there's some stories I think that are really, really good and of course you have my top two stories of the season which you will probably know what they're going to be if you know me. So sit there my dear children. Hmm. Yes, 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 sit there. And I will dive into how I rank season one of Doctor Who. So, in eighth place, it is the Sensor Rights. Yes, this is the worst story I can actually think to put in for season one. I don't really care for the Sensor Rights yet. It's got some good moments in there with messing around with like, Susan's telepathic powers. But it doesn't really come into the show once again. And of course, I do like the way how the Doctor does tell the Sensor Rights off. You stole and sold on my ship. I want it back. Now, me and my granddaughter have never argued. Never, never, never. During our troubles. Until now. And I blame you for it. Yes, I blame you for it. Now, give me back my equipment. Yeah, I really do not like the sense rights as much as other people do. Because I know some people love it. Some people, like me, don't actually love it. It's an okay story to watch. It's actually just an okay one just to go and watch. In some place, it is the Keys of Manus. Now, this is a good story, technically, because I was trying to put this one a bit higher, but there are so many iconic stories I absolutely do enjoy. But out of the rest of season one, this story, it doesn't really hold up to the rest of the first season. The Keys of Manus doesn't, I'm afraid. I really do like how the TARDIS team gets separated through different doors to look for the Keys of Manus. And, of course, they... You know the whole plot if you've probably watched this video. Yeah, so in some place, it's the keys of madness. It's number six. So in sixth place, it is the very first ever Doctor Who story, The Unearthly Child. Now, the reason this is in sixth place is because part one is absolutely brilliant. But then, of course, when we get to the cavemen episodes for episodes two, three, and four, I don't really care for them. I mean, this story is literally is just good for The Unearthly Child, for the, for the pilot episode. Because we are in the junkyard, we are at Coal Hill School. We are introduced to Barbara at first, and of course Ian and Susan, and the fact that this, she's this whole mystery to them, and they've got to go and get answers, and of course they stumble across the police box, and the Doctor goes, I believe these humans are noting you. We have not from this space. We're not from this earth. We're from the fourth dimension, the space and time. I just absolutely love the first Doctor in this one, because... Only the first Doctor, this is where you got like hints of little bit dark bits in the Doctor because he's about to bash a caveman in with a skull. And of course, the part, the first part of it is really brilliant. Number five, The Edge of Destruction. I know people are probably wondering why I put this one in number five because I actually do enjoy this one because the TARDIS team are trapped in the TARDIS because the TARDIS is trying to warn that they travel back to the early point in the universe, the Big Bang. And of course, you've got the Doctor blaming Ian and Barbara, say, you, you did it to my ship, didn't you? You did it to my ship. Um, you did it. You did it. I really do like this like whole two-part episode. I like how it explores more of the TARDIS bit. So normally, we just see the TARDIS console in the first two stories. But it's kind of good to see more of the TARDIS kind of expand a bit. I have to be honest with you. Number four, The Reign of Terror. Yes, the Reign of Terror is in fourth place. Now, the TARDIS lands in the middle of the French Revolution. Now, this is the Doctor's favourite time period in our Earth's history. Now, of course, this whole situation has been... They can't change the laws of time. They cannot do anything. But they do need to try and get out of this really bad situation they're in. Of course, the, the Ian and Barbara and Susan kind of get captured by the French Revolution and kind of trapped as prisoners. 
and Ian at one point was going to be hanged where the first Doctor basically has to keep walking to Paris to go and get the TARDIS team and rescue them and basically get back to the TARDIS and leave. Yeah, I really do like this story. It's a really good historian story. I have to admit, I absolutely love this one. I weren't too keen on the historian stories, but I have to admit, this one's actually kind of good. I absolutely love it. Number three. In third place, it is Marco Polo. Now, this story is missing. None of the seven episodes do survive, but it does exist in the target book. So, I'm only using the target book to help me basically say for this story. So, I absolutely do love Marco Polo. With the way the Tice team come across... Marco Polo and of course, you know, he's traveling all along China. I have to admit, this is a good story. I love the Target book. I have got a review coming out for it, so I don't really want to give too much away about the Target book. Uh, if this story was existing, I think this would still be in third place because nothing can beat my number two, my two top season one stories, I have to be honest with you. So number two, it is the Daleks. Yes, this is the Daleks' very first outing in Doctor Who. And it is the second ever story in Doctor Who history. Not only just that, it is the very first time the Doctor actually comes across another alien apart from us humans. So this story, I have to be honest with you, it's absolutely brilliant. It introduce, introduces the Daleks really brilliantly. I love the fact we got the dead jungle. I really think the BBC did really well for this seven part story. I love the jungle. I love how we meet the fowls in this one. I love the fact that there's like radiation poisoning and the Doctor, Ian and Barbara and Susan come basically infected with the radiation poison and they're dying so they need this drug. Which basically one of the fowls left outside the tires and the Doctor tells them and of course the fowls basically do give Susan another box because I can't trust the Daleks. But after the, even all this, they do try to rescue the fowls where they try to warn them saying it's a trap, it's a trap. I honestly have to admit, I do like the way how the Daleks basically disable Ian for a little bit of the story. Where he's there and he's trying to escape and they go, fire! Ah, my legs! I can't feel my legs! I absolutely do like the way how this story is really, really planned out really well. I think, I think it's seven episodes is a bit too long, but it's actually kind of good. I have to be honest with you. I absolutely love it. And number one, my all-time favourite story from season one... The Aztecs. Now, this is my favourite Hartnell story, Kaput. It is my favourite story out of the Hartnell era completely. And I've got to be honest with you, I just absolutely love the Aztecs. It's absolutely brilliant. I mean, this is the first time the Doctor basically tells Barbara, You cannot interfere in history. Not one line. Believe me, I know. I know. I honestly have to admit, I absolutely do love the story because the Doctor accidentally does get engaged in this one. I have to be honest with you, this one's absolutely brilliant. I love the fact we are in the tomb. I love the fact how Barbara gets basically mistaken for this um, goddess creature. This goddess of ours. I mean, absolutely brilliant storyline this is. If you haven't seen the Aztecs, I do highly recommend it. And that is how I rank every single story from season one from eighth place to one place. Let me know how do you rank the rest of season one. Please do like, subscribe and show me and join me for more episodes like this for season two. When we dive in to how how i rank every single story from season two yeah thank you for subscribing thank you for being magnificent and thank you for being absolutely brilliant and amazing enjoy